once we have our resources assigned to our tasks, this is a good time to go back and look at our project schedule, see if there's any, th any particular issues with it, and also look at how we can view our resource usage. So we saw before that we could roll up the values. We, we uh, say in project management, we can have these values for the different activities that constitute our deliverables and subdeliverables rolled up into these values, our totals at the top. So we can uh, see our costs that way and we can see our durations that way. One thing that we'll notice right off the bat here is there's something a little bit odd. This is going to take 3.38 days. Well, the reason for that is that Microsoft Project is one eager beaver. And what it does is it says, OK, fine, we're going to start this Monday morning at 8 AM. Uh, it looks like we have a uh, one thing that's going to take an hour. We're going to uh, have another thing that's going to take two hours. And uh, then we have this one last thing that's going to take an hour to make the hotel arrangements. So three hours later, after we've started, we can go ahead and have the trucks there and start uh, packing up the kitchen, living room, bedroom, and all the other areas. And you'll notice on our Gantt chart, in fact, that is what it's doing. It's saying we're going to start that uh, task, we're then going to sleep overnight, and we're going to then uh, uh, finish packing up in the morning and then we're going to start driving down to Atlanta. That isn't really realistic. What we want to do is we want to say that um, this particular sub-deliverable, having that meeting, that's going to take a day in our schedule. Okay, so uh, we're not going to expand the hours involved with the various tasks because we want to keep that accurate, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this will add a constraint to this sub-deliverable here, but I'm going to say one uh, day is what that's going to take. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all these uh, subsequent tasks here on packing dependent not on the last task in this list here, which I had it set up as, but as uh, d being dependent on this sub-deliverable, the meeting with friends to plan move. So number one. Okay, so hopefully this is starting to look a little bit better. It says four days, so we don't have some odd value for days here. If I go over to my Gantt chart, it looks like we're going to, uh, uh, Microsoft Project still thinks we're going to do that bright and early in the morning, but then we're going to spend the entire day uh, doing something else. The next day we're going to load up our trucks, then we're going to drive down to Atlanta, and then we're going to be making the flights, arrangements, and things like that. And then we're uh, at the same time that we are unpacking our uh, trucks and moving into the new apartment. Okay, so that looks a little bit more reasonable. Now that we've made those changes, we can see a couple of things with our uh, resources. Obviously, we see them uh, in the Gantt chart. It shows us the um, costs associated, if it's a cost type of uh, resource, or it shows us the uh, trucks or the uh, friends or the boxes and how many are uh, being used. If you uh, come over here to the view bar and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see um, that we have our uh, several different things related to resources. Let's look back at our resource sheet. So this is where we actually started out with. And we have um, the various work and cost and material resources. But let's say that uh, for some reason one of our friends backs out. So he's feeling ill or, or whatever, he doesn't want to do it. So we are now down to three friends that are going to help us out, so 300%. If we do that, we can see that we are now going to be in a bind because we our work uh, schedule was requiring us to have uh, these friends working on different tasks. And so we can see here that we have a resource allocation problem. It'll show us that right here. If we go back to our uh, Gantt chart, you will also see little red men here because it says you have four tasks that um, are requiring one friend each, and you've only got three friends. So it's just not going to work. Okay, We'll see that same thing for unpacking. 
For driving, we only have three tasks to require friends, so we can still drive everything down there with just three friends, but we're going to have to perhaps hire somebody to help us with the packing and unpacking at the various ends of this if we can't drum up another friend. Or we're going to have to change our schedule around. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into the lesson on resource leveling. So there are ways that we could do this with just three friends. Let's also look here at the uh, these one of these other forms here, the resource graph. This provides us with a histogram or a graph of our resource utilization over different time periods. It's a little bit odd though because we have this graph that's over on this part and then over here is where we actually select what resource we're looking at. Okay, It isn't available for cost resources. I don't understand why it still shows us that, but it, that's the way Microsoft Project does it. But we can come up here now and get to our friends resource, our truck resource. And if we come over to the part where we, uh, on this uh, diagram where we're actually doing the work, we can see here that on Tuesday we have an over allocation problem. We're doing fine on Wednesday because we have three friends and that's all that's required and we have another over allocation problem. It gives us this black line at where our current allocation is set to. Okay, So our truck is doing fine. We've got 100% of truck one on these three days. Got 100% of truck two. Uh, and then uh, we've got 26 large boxes we need on uh, Tuesday. We got 30 medium boxes, and we got 20 small boxes that are required. Okay, so that can be very useful, especially when you're trying to identify where your resource allocation problems are. Probably more useful, I think, is the task, or I'm sorry, not task usage, the resource usage sheet, and that will actually show us uh, once again as a time scale over here. Um, where we are actually using these resources. So we need to find, find those days and we can then see that here's our over allocated Tuesday and our over allocated Thursday. They are in red here and um, so we're going to have to uh, deal with this somehow. But we can then see the different hours of the day that um, different resources are being used. Okay, Or we can get where the different large boxes are going. We know we need 26 large boxes. Now where are they going again? Well, we can see the different tasks that are using up large boxes, just as we can see various tasks that are using up our friends or they're allocated to. Okay, so those are two nice ways that we can look at our research resource utilization. That's in the resource usage sheet as well as in the resource graph. Okay, and like I said, the resource graph takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, it's pretty easy to figure out. So we'll go ahead and uh, put our um, uh, resources back to 400% here so that we're all nice and happy with uh, getting being able to get this move done. So hopefully that gives you some uh, more tools that you can use to view resource allocations.